Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sybin here bringing you the latest lore of Meds of the Gathering. Today, let's actually go over some of my personal thoughts and opinions on the closing of Dominaria's story. We've recently wrapped up the lore of this amazing plane here on the channel and recapped the major events in anticipation of the next chapter and set to come. However, we all have our own opinions when it comes to how Wizards of the Coast tells their stories. I, for one, consider myself a Vorthos junkie, but that doesn't mean I'm blind to valid criticism I feel could make it better. Now, I may be in the minority here, and that's completely fine, especially when it comes to some of you watching this very video, but I was not a huge fan of the Dominaria storyline. In particular, the articles themselves and the condensed nature of the writing. Some of you may think that the Dominaria lore was awesome, and that's totally fine. However, I felt a little disappointed personally, and I just wanted to share my thoughts on that. So what would I consider the sins of the Dominaria story? Well, like I said, I think it mostly boils down to the writers having a set number of articles to convey a very well-developed story with a boatload of old and new characters all within the confines of a single set. This isn't like MTG stories of old that can be written in like a novel or over the course of three separate blocks. Nah, this is new MTG storytelling. That means articles and a single block with sets following quickly one right after the other. In Dominaria's case, they had to wrap up the story before M19 started, so they could begin releasing the lore for that. And that didn't give them much time. The result? A feeling of a rushed story that just didn't have enough development time I wanted to see for all of its characters. Yes, we had fun moments with Tefiri, Raph, and Slimefoot who seemed to get more love than most, but that really left a score of legendary creatures without much or any screen time. And Raph, just to note, I understand why people like him, but really to me his character was just a one line every article kind of wisecracker. But Shauna, girl, where was she? Same with Tiana and Arvad. After their initial origins, they really, really took a backseat. Of course, all the Planeswalkers got their fair share of development, to fearing most of all because he's the latest to join the Gatewatch, which makes sense. I loved the journey of Jaya and Chandra. Karn was kinda light, but really didn't do much in the conflict with Belzenlock anyway, but at least it sets up his stories for down the road. Gideon and Liliana grew a little. Liliana, quite a bit, actually. I guess she's really kind of taken over a new leaf, but Gideon now thinks otherwise, so interesting dynamic there. Still outside of the core characters, there were so many that never saw the light of day, but to be fair, in a set as legendary packed as this, I didn't expect them all to be touched, but still, it would have been nice to see some? Characters like Squee and Multani were big characters in the lore of old, but one got no screen time and the other was basically a homicidal bush. And that's not saying anything about legends that had implications, but were totally cut out. Daragaz and Tetsuko Yumazawa, for instance. You know another character who was super important but didn't get a lot of screen time? Shockingly, it was Belzenlock. Yep, the main baddie of Dominaria was hardly mentioned. Motive's weird and not well fleshed out, and he had about a paragraph of lines before just dying in a very lackluster fashion. Never once did I feel like the Cabal were a real threat to Dominaria, and the way he was just pricked with a sword and died so anticlimactically made me question the journey to begin with. Yes, they did a lot of developing, but not for this main threat. Belzenlock was not a compelling villain, and his motivations were laughable. He just wanted Dominaria's complex past to be about him? How long was he on Dominaria before this rise? How did he gain control of the Cabal? Why history? Luckily, we didn't spend much time on Belzenlock. As with all the previous Demon Lords, he didn't stand much of a chance. Just like Razakath, Belzenlock falls in just a few lines. Speaking what, like four sentences over the entirety of Dominaria? Look, I know he isn't the main main baddie, that's Nicol Bolas, and lord knows we're getting major development on his front, but still, if so many heroes are looking to dunk on this demon, at least give us pause to think it's gonna be a big deal. It's more of the journey than the destination on this one, guys, and the journey was pretty nice all things considered. Still, this is Dominaria, and I expected more from this iconic plane. Rather, what we got was an unsatisfying ending to some major characters and the feeling that Dominaria was just a filler story, leading us to Ravnica, albeit with a much bigger roster of characters. 
Anyway guys, those are just my thoughts on Dominaria as a whole. I'm still excited for the lore and story of MTG, don't get me wrong, I have my issues with the writing style and the use of multiple writers, not to mention this new squished article release schedule, but still, I look forward to every new chapter. Maybe Dominaria wasn't what I hoped it could be, but it's time to look forward to the future of the game to come. Why don't you guys let me know about what you thought of Dominaria and its story? Am I hilariously wrong in my assessment? Give me your opinions in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed the video and the content on the channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share it across the multiverse. We would also like to suggest checking out all the great exclusive rewards you could get as a member of the Vorthos Army over on Patreon. Find a link to that in the video's description. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time here on the Ether Hub.